We're going to bring in <laughs> Sam now. <laughs> Sammy Stormtrooper. There she is. Hey, hey. Hi, Sam. Hello. Hi, Sam. Hi, Lee. How you doing, all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Nearly, we're nearly there. We're nearly out of this second Top lockdown. Of the I've got my Stormtrooper Christmas good. jumper on. We won't it's ask Sam about his team. I'm going to have to... Uh, Lee Towsy, ah. fully, fully formed at work today. Yes. Wow. No. I'm going to need one of those, by the way. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, we're, we're trying to get you one sorted out for sure. Sam, great to great to have you on the show. Great to be here. The first female ever female stormtrooper in Star Wars. You've been in no, Force no. Awakens as a stormtrooper, Rogue One as a stormtrooper, Stroke Scarif Rebel. Um, first order stormtrooper in uh, the Last Jedi solo Star Wars story. Uh, you were in uh, the My Band. You're a My Band trooper. Uh, My Band, yeah. Trooper. Yeah, and stormtrooper as well. Rise of Skywalker, stiff trooper, and rebel. Wow. You know what? They. I don't know what. That's probably my IMDb, but or something. Uh, Wikipedia. But actually, um, I've played fifteen different characters in Star Wars. Have you really? Wow. Can you name them all? Wow. I, I will try. It might be 16, but I'm not sure. Um, okay. So, Force Awakens, I was uh, First Order Trooper and the Communications Officer, First Order Communications Officer. That was my first ever role. So, I'm on the bridge wearing a headset looking like this. Uh, that was two. Then, um, Rogue One, I was... That's Scarif Rebel. I think that they're referring to the Gillette advert because I've done three Star Wars adverts. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. so I haven't counted those in the 15, but at, just in the film, I was um, in Rogue One, I was a stormtrooper and I was uh, the Hammerhead Corvette pilot on the right that does that. Oh, so cool. I saved everyone's life, even though they then died. <laughs> Um, and I, I really need to write these down because I forget. Uh, Rogue One, Rogue One. I think that was that, those two. Um, oh, no, sorry. I was um, Saw Guerrera's right-hand woman. So I was basically Forrest Whitaker's, like, you know, I used to stand next to him looking hard. Um, and in the scene with Bodhi Rook, um, when he gets captured and taken to see Saw, you can see my shadow behind him. Unfortunately, you, they cut me out of the scene, but on the wow. DVD and Blu-ray documentary, I'm standing there with the gun guarding the, the cave. Um, so that's three. Um, I think that's it for Rogue One. And then uh, first order in... So where are we up to now, Lee? Are you counting? We lost count. Yeah, I'm um, counting. I'm up to five. So that's five, right? And then Last Jedi, first order. Solo... Minban Trooper, Imperial Trooper. I was a uh, partisan in the final scene with um, behind, standing behind um, Lando Calrissian when he uh, loses Millennium Falcon. I'm standing behind him. Uh, I think that's that. And then, then we get to... Uh, what? Yeah, that's right. And then Rise Skywalker, I was... Drum roll. First Order Trooper, Sith Trooper, Ali Santa, my, my ex-wing pilot. Um, I was uh, a partisan in the scene with the flashback of Ray, mum and dad. On the Empire's planet with, with the hoods, those people, one of those, up, it's gone from the brain. Where are not you? Not guard. Sorry? I'm not Batoon no, guard. I oh, know they cool. weren't in... No, it's called something else. And I can't oh, remember. Sam, it out. Sorry? I'm asking other I'm Sam. Not really Sam. Sam. I'm not really a fan of Star Wars. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> there are two more, but I can't remember them because my mind's right. gone completely blank. Well, Sam, you can let us know, and Sam Prentice will flash those images up as you're saying them. Yes, yeah. there's a bit more. And, and what I will do very quickly is I didn't find this image. There you are in the background there. There I am. That's, yeah. see, that's oh, yeah. proof. That is proof. Yeah. I wasn't lying. And then we've got this image here. Yeah. No. Nice. Oh, I love that character. <laughs> then we've got this one here. Oh my god. I love how that picture makes me look. This whole film's about me. 
It's very <laughs> cool. And then I found this, I think, on your uh, Instagram. That's, that's me on the left there with a the big gun. Oh, that's you, is it? Cool. Okay, yeah. so is that, that was Force Awakens, was it? No, that's the, like, the Rise of Skywalker. No, that was Skywalker, because it's the red one. Sorry, yeah, of course. That was it. Come on, Lee, keep up. I know. That was a that and one that's very thing, special. The coldest I've ever been in my life. One here, Sam. Here we go. Ah. Oh, look how tanned I am. That was oh, my, uh, that was my first gig. That was my first gig. For, uh, I remember that. I was um, having a lot of fun that night. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, we we did. If you remember back, Lee, we did. Uh, I did that, and then I, we went. We went on. And we met, didn't we? And we did the midnight opening of somewhere like John Lewis or John something Lewis. like that. John Lewis, right. Street. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, and then I was having it. even more of a good time. You were. You were. <laughs> well, that, that was the first time that I'd met you, Sam, and um, you know it was it was a blast from what I remember, which is funny yeah. because. When I then saw you, I don't know why I thought I, I wrongly assumed that you would just remember me because we met that one time. So it was kind of weird. And I was like, oh, hi, Sam, you know, on set. And you're like, hey. You know what? Do you know what? I have a really good memory. So I did remember you, but I couldn't figure out from where. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good fun, though. It was good fun. Amazing fun. He's quite, he's quite memorable with Sam. So, uh, yeah. Well, it helps that we've got the same name. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Out of all those characters, Sam, which one was your favourite? Oh, I get asked this a lot. Um, I think I love playing Stormtroopers because, you know, it's just, it's, it's badass. And it and also, you know, the whole woman being a Stormtrooper thing, it's amazing. Um cool. Specifically, though, my favourite character to play was Ali Santa. I just, I loved everything. And I loved, like, that JJ, love JJ, um, JJ, JJ and I, you know, got to know, that sounds wrong. Um, he auditioned me for a line and unfortunately got cut. But because of that, we kind of, he knew who I was and he wanted to do something else with me. And that's how we ended up doing the hugging scene. In, um, and in in the uh, around the Millennium Falcon, and there was he said to me when we were filming it, he, I was like, JJ, is that okay? It was just it was insane because I'm an actress, and although I wasn't, you know, a, a, a cast member as such on that movie, I was I had auditioned for JJ, I had done a line, and then I was being directed by JJ, and in that scene, he was literally just talking to me throughout the whole morning, and even t bringing me over to the monitor and saying, like, this bit, can you do this, can you do it? And I was, like, pinching myself, going, you are being directed by J.J. Abrams. You know, he's up there, top three directors in the world. And um, so I was pinching myself, and he was like, I asked him, I said, Is that, was that okay, J.J.? And he said, yeah. He goes, there's a whole storyline there. And that's what I love, because he made me feel like, all right, she was in the background, but she had a story and she had a life. And the person I was cuddling, I, you know, I was about to go to battle, and I was... I might never see them again, and it, he just made me feel like my character mattered, and so I have a really fond attachment and memories of that. So Ali Sam is my favourite. In terms of costume, though, the Minban Stormtrooper from Solo has a cape, and I mean, any anything with a cape is just winning. You know, Sam, what was the line you had to deliver for JJ? Do you know what? I got asked this the other day, and I shouldn't really say what it is because you know, but it was just it was all it was was um so the whole scene got cut. It was it was a scene with um Finn and Ray, so Daisy and John, and John had uh, Finn has just got back from somewhere. I can't remember the logistics of the whole thing, but he just got back. I think it's at the beginning where he, he and um Poe go off, don't they? And then they come back and then they speak to them when they get back. And they have a really serious conversation. And then I just said, glad you made it back. And then he said, thanks. And then a name, which I was given and then taken away because I was Ali Santa. So, but yeah. Um, I was I was there, actually, when you I delivered that line. There. Yeah, I was there. You were there. so happy for me. You were cheering me watching. on. I love I was watching. And same same with, you know, it goes, it goes both ways, Sam, because when Lee made me get on the floor outside where the Falcon was to rock R2, do you remember that? 
Right. Do you know what? I have yeah. such full memories of that day because I was on set and all I kept hearing all day was JJ going, Sam, Sam, you can see you, Sam, Sam, you're like, Sam, Sam. And I'm like, oh, he's coming here, Sam. I'm like, what? Who? What? Me, me, me. Because when you're on set, you have to really be aware of being called or being given instructions all the time. So I'm on hyper alert. And every time I hear Sam, I'm looking because I think they're talking to me. And then I realize it's you. And then it makes me laugh because I know you. But also at the same time, I cannot tell you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, how freaking proud I was of you. Um, because I've, you know, meeting you at that party with your droid and then seeing you on set and every time you got to do something, we'd, we'd kind of cross and I'd go, oh my God, are you trying? Oh my God. And we'd talk and it was, I was so proud of you, Sam, honestly. And I was just like. It was the funniest thing, Lee, because Sam literally as a rebel pilot would walk from one point of the set to the other. And then reset. reset. And again. And again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. again. And, I, and I think I walked past you. I said, have you got to where you're going? Have you got in one where of the X-Wings yet? Where are you going? What ship yeah. is yours? Where? And of course, uh, they said, have you counted how many X-Wings? And I said, yeah, there's about 10. And a lot of them were carbon cutouts. So I had no idea. They just looked really realistic. I was like, oh, are they? I don't know. Or whatever. But uh, yeah, did you actually get into a cockpit at any point? No, that is one of my regrets from that. I... I did a bit, I did a bit of a photo shoot next to one with Jonathan, the lovely um, on-set photographer, um, and I did a really cool photo shoot because we had like effects and there was smoke and everything, and I was holding my helmet, and but I never got in one. And I remember once I were looking for someone to get in one, and I was like, and they picked my friend Liz, who's in my head and in hers, she's my mum in the movie because she's she looks like me, she's a bit older than me, and she was an X-wing pilot. And so our story is, is that she is my mum and she trained me and blah, blah, blah. But she got to go in it. And she's she's this northern woman and she's hilarious. And I was like, oh, is that Lizzie in X-Wing? Oh. So, <laughs> well, I was a bit upset because of me. I was happy that Lizzie got in there. But, yeah, I really wanted to get in the X-Wing. What I really wanted to do was be in it and shoot a scene where, you know, when they go, red, red, blah, blah, blah. Before. I wanted to do that so, but from the moment I put that costume on, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do the whole, the, the it's like a generic Star Wars thing of the, of the pilots with the helmet on, talking to each other, flying and shoot. That's what I wanted to do. That's all I wanted to do. But when Pablo wrote that lovely little backstory for me in the, in the book and everything, I, I, I had like a nice little imaginary battle. But I knew I went and I thought, <laughs> that's, cool. that's amazing that's amazing well obviously we're on droid builders uk this is the christmas show sam you've got your christmas top on what is your favorite droid i love all the i love your droid whose name is just oh the blue one oh but what les yes yes i love les i love les um sorry that was you'll have to cut that bit out um <laughs> i love les um, well, you know, there's a picture of you with R2KT as well, isn't it? The pink droid. This is what I was about to say, actually. All right. So, basically, people think I'm a bit weird because there's a few Star Wars groups on Facebook that I'm a member of. And I've been a member of them since 2014. And I joined them because I was genuinely a fan and genuinely interested. And one of those is the UK Short Droid Drivers group that I'm in. And I've been in it for years, and I am genuinely interested in everything you guys post. And I love it when you guys are like, "Oh, who's got a spare one of these? And who's got a spare one of these?" <laughs> and then, yeah. so I actually love all of that. And I'm not—I don't join these groups for any other reason, but genuinely because I'm interested. And so I love all the, all of the different iterations of droids. And actually, when I've been at, um, I think my first sort of real event I went to was Celebration Europe in London. And I met, I think it was James Furtado. Oh, yeah. yeah with yeah, one yeah. of his droids. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And he gave me his card with the droids on it. And I was like, you guys build these. Like, and I'd never really thought about it before because, obviously, I know they were droids in the original films. And then you guys made them for a hobby. And then I guess... When they started making the films again, they were like, hang on a minute, where are we going to get droids from? You know, they don't exist anymore. 
Um, so I've been fascinated by all of that. But um, yeah, my favourite is Liz, the blue one, and also R2 Katie, because um, if, if people don't know about R2 Katie, she is the pink droid. And basically, what happened was um, Alvin Johnson, who is the founder of the 501st Legion, his daughter, Katie, um, fortunately had cancer and she was, um, it was terminal. And she, her dying wish was that she could get a pink droid. A pink, well, her, a pink R2D2. And they made it and she, that, she got to see a pink droid and it was called R2KT for Katie. And it's just the most beautiful story. And there's now an R2 Katie Foundation and they raise lots of money. And what happened was that that droid became so popular and so well loved. And they made a toy, toy of it. I think it was Hasbro or That's Canada. Nice. Someone issued a yeah. toy of it. Yeah. And then when they made Force Awakens, they actually put it in the film. Yeah. Um, and so that's the story and everything about it. And each um, d different chapters of, of the 501st have their own art and Katie, because obviously logistically you can't send this droid all around the world. And so the Spanish ones, ha the Spanish have an R2 Katie that, that goes to hospitals in Spain. And there's a French art, art in Katie. And it's just beautiful. And when I met Alvin at Orlando at the 501st Bash, and he inducted me as an honorary member into the 501st there and then on the floor, after that had all happened, he said to me, Sam, would you mind signing underneath the lid of R2 Katie? And I was already in tears because of being inducted, but that was just the most touching thing because I know how much that joy means to him in memory of his daughter. And so signing that was just an absolute honour. So, yeah, she's my fave. That's good. That's and Sam, well, that would have been the one that was used in the film because yeah. Albin flew yeah. his R2 Katie to the UK that Oliver and I looked after during The Force Awakens. We shot on that droid. And then it was flown back to America when we were finished with it. So we we used the original R2 Katie in the film. Oh my god, that means so much to me. Yeah, oh, it's really good. So Lucasfilm were well, aware of that, that, and it was their idea, and it's brilliant. So. We've got the UK. The UK builders have now got a R2 Katie that's been built by Oliver Steeples and with parts donated as well. So the UK now has one, or will have one, certainly when we get out of lockdown and stuff. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I look forward to meeting her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. That's fantastic. Brilliant. That's fantastic. So we've done the favourite droid, favourite director, like I need to ask. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> JJ. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And what's on all the films that you've worked on? It doesn't have to be Star Wars. Um, what's the best film experience that you've had? What's it, when you've come out of the film and you finish the, finish filming? What's the, has there been a top one? Has there been the best one? Because, you know, certainly in lockdown, it's been interesting, Sam, because you've you've been Facebooking and tweeting and all that kind of stuff, um, saying that you're missing your Star Wars family. And I, I found that really intriguing because you're obviously immersed in it now and you understand it and, and see how passionate people are about things. Um, so I just and wondered... Yeah, what... I, was, I was watching something the other day about... And a woman was describing um, how a film set is like, it's almost like Big Brother, like you go into a house and you go and you're with each other and, it, and it's just that and it's just you until it's over and then you're like, oh, I miss that. And she was just talking about films in general and film sets in general. But I think anyone who's ever had the pleasure of working on a Star Wars film times that by a million percent because you just, it is the most amazing. You can't. I can't even. Really, I try and put it into it. Everyone is so grateful to be there because we know that not only are we getting paid to be there, people would pay to be there, um, and people have. Um, <laughs> like they did. A, they did an auction for someone just to be in the background of a scene for Amaze, I think it was, and they got like ten thousand um, dollars. So just to be there, you know you're lucky and you know you're making history. And also, it's just it's just joyous. And everyone walks work. Don't get me wrong, it's still work and we have bad days and things go wrong. Oh, yeah. But yeah. generally, the atmosphere has is always amazing. And there's such a close bond between everyone. And every, you get all the different departments and everyone's so good at what they do. But 
there's such a cohesion because we're all working for the same thing and it's just amazing and when you're in it for so long and um, i think i did 82 days on rise of skywalker wow. and for a background artist that i even heard of um i think to go to the rap party you had to have done 80 days so i just made it but um once you've been in that bubble and then you come out of it it's like a culture sh you're like whoa what? Is, there's there's real there's, there's life outside of these walls you know oh, what? there's news going on in the real world because also it's long hours and you don't know what's going on it's just you live yeah. eat breathe sleep stars and then when you come out of it it's just like oh and you miss it so much and i've got friends from since 2014 they are my family now because We've, I've been to weddings of Star Wars people. I've been to birthday parties, and I really feel like they're family. And it's so hard in lockdown because you get usually we get to go to like um, you know uh, conventions and things like that. So invariably you will see people from that world outside of it, and we actually we haven't had any contact at all. And so it has been really really hard. Um, I think in terms of my favourite film, um, I always have like um, a soft, like a fond memory of Force Awakens because it was there was just this air of anticipation in, and that we all knew like how huge this was because it was the first film that they'd made for such a long time, and JJ was just beside himself. Um, he was just because he's a fan and he's been a fan since he was a child. He he, he put um. He put Star Wars posters in the back of Superbad on the wall and things like that because he loved Star Wars so much. And so he would literally, I remember one, we was filming um, night scenes for Jakku and that was my first ever time as a stormtrooper. And he would just come on the right and go, guys, 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 look at the moon, look at the moon. And it was a full moon. And it, he, everyone was just looking up. Imagine 500 people at the back of Pinewood looking up at the moon and it's dead silence and JJ just goes, guys, we're making Star Wars and there's an <laughs> effing full moon and literally like goosebumps and and you just know how much it meant to him and you can't not be affected by that. And it affects everyone's work. It makes them work better and it just makes everyone happy and grateful yeah. to be there and you produce your best work. Um, but yeah, that was like amazing, and I'll never ever forget that because that was my first time. But in terms of out of everything, I think Rise of Skywalker because 82 days, and by that point, I was so ingrained in the Star Wars family that I just felt like literally part of the furniture. And then when JJ became to know who I was, because obviously he's Although we worked together in 2014, he's not going to remember every single person that he meets. And so, for us to, to form that sort of bond, not bond, but relation, working relationship, it was just like icing on the cake and everything. But it was just amazing. Everything, like even working with you guys, Sam, that, I have such fond memories of that whole film. So, I just, I, I, I probably don't go more than a couple of days without wishing I was back on that set. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a real tough one to adjust, and uh, you know, I, I when I when I came out of that as I said, Julie, a few times, you know, it, it just feels like there's a piece of you that's, you know, you feel like you should really be there doing something, um, but it, it, it's a very very difficult one to adjust to. And as Lee said to me before, you know, there are people that don't go back, you know, because they can't deal with that drop off, and it is you're in it, and the, again, you know the scenes the jungle scenes and all the stuff we were in you're in star wars you know there's there's the ship there's this there's that there's the droids you're doing everything yeah there you are and you know move out of the way let the people do let them tell the story right they're over let's go and get some lunch you know whatever and it's it's just an extension of uh of, of reality i guess um which i which i found very I think it, that is that is our reality for that for that period of time I kind of don't have a, another reality. I don't watch the news because I don't have time to watch the news because I get I leave home at 4 a.m. and I get home at 10 p.m. So yeah. that is my reality. There's no other thing. And you start to question, 
you start to um, take it for granted and you're like, actually, we don't have robots and, like walking, going around in real life, you know. And there are, you know, people can't fly and things like that. You're like, oh, actually, you lose track. And it is it's quite sad, actually, when it's over. You touched on it, Sam. They're, they are long days, though, aren't they? As an SA, as a supporting actor, they are long days. Well, they're long days for all of us. I know yeah, definitely. for people with costumes and stuff like that to deal with as well, and makeups and what have you, the hours yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I always say to people, like, when they when they um, ask me questions about working on, on these films, and they're like, I'm like, don't don't get it twisted. Like, it's hard. Um, especially being a film trooper, you... Toilet issues, like, <laughs> especially as a woman, um, you can't sit down. Um, so you know, it's like that. You just, I'm never, I'm never not going to do it. The thing, the thing with the trenches as well, Sam. I remember it was the same set as the Mimban set, and it was wet and muddy as well, wasn't it? It was horrific. Um, yeah, was that was the Mimban set, and it was like off to the side, and then yeah, it right. was just. It, yeah. I've never seen so much mud in my life, and it was pitch black, yeah. and there were wires with um, squibs going off. That's right, yeah. It was, do you know what? I've said this to people, and I know it sounds like a cliche, but it, I actually think that's the closest you can get to a real war zone without yeah. being in the war zone. Yeah. Because it was, it was really dangerous, Yeah. and there were massive bombs going off that were, were like bags of peat. And I remember Woody Harrison going, making jokes about this goddamn peat, peat man, goddamn peat. I, I, I go home. Now, bear in mind, I've got a cat suit under my sorting bracket. There was peat in places that I can't mention. And I don't know how it got in there. But it was just like so intense with these bombs going off and mud and like, you know, the script on the wires. And it was scary and it's dangerous and we had some like people falling over i don't think i fell over then i'm kind of known for falling over but um yeah it was really really intense yeah yeah it was yeah it was yeah so what's your favorite star wars toy then or collectible that you've got oh do you know what i've got so many most of it i'm not gonna say where they are because i might get lost but <laughs> um i love i only really collect the things that me that speak to me or that are me like stormtroopers obviously i've got i think all of the black series modern ones um uh the six inch black series and i've got the little three and a half kenners i love those um and i've got i've got some really random stuff but i like this i've just been said this from the states so I, I don't know if you know lovely mark daniel um, the, the Disney presenter. Yeah. I saw this. I, I saw this, and him, he and his girlfriend had this, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And they've lovely, so lovely, sent me this. And oh, bless them. This is a little baby Yoda in a stormtrooper helmet. I mean, come on. Amazing. But, um, That's sweet. I think award for most random. I. Wow! Look at that, Mary Holiday, holiday edition. edition. Holiday edition. Holiday. I mean, look at it. It's so bizarre. Wow. <laughs> it's just, it's green for a start. I mean, Sif Tube is red. It's just, oh my God, it matches my outfit and my lipstick. It's so it does. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. I love that's that. Funny. <laughs> I love the quirky stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the um, R2D2 sellotape dispenser where the sellotape comes out of his crotch. No. No, that's it's, the same. That's the three PO one. That's C3. yes, that's it. That's what I mean. Yeah, and it's um, yeah. it's like a vintage, and they're worth loads of money. Right. And I've seen one in the flesh because a friend of mine is a comic book owner and comic store owner, and he had one for sale. And yeah. they are the funniest Amazing. thing. But so yeah. rad. I love the random oh. things. I got um, I got with a uh, cereal as well, a little stormtrooper helmet, and then you take the helmet off, and it's a cereal bowl, and there's a little spoon in the back of his head, and you can just pour the milk in and the cereal, and you can. Eat very strange, but I love like quirky, weird things like that. Cool. Wow. Cool. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. So Sam, well, tell me what's what's next in store for you? What what's your you know, I appreciate work's been difficult during lockdown and stuff. Oh but, yeah. Work's you know, been you, like you non existent. Well, you? You, um, you do various other jobs apart from supporting actor actress, should I say sorry. You do modelling as well. Well, I used to. I'm retired now. Right. I like okay. that. And I'm 41, believe it or not. So um, 
I kind of like there's not that much. Uh, well, you do get called for older models, but because I'm in a little grey area because I'm too old on paper to be a young model. But if I go for jobs for people in their forties, they go to me. You you don't look old enough. So I'm in the middle. But um, basically, I am a trained actress, and as I said, JJ auditioned four or five, or four of us for that scene, and he chose me, and oh. that was the kind of push that I needed to know. You know what? You're all right. You're good at this. Um, and so yeah, I'm just trying to get an agent and um. Yeah, go forwards and, and act. Take the helmet off and speak. Right. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's quite hard to, obviously, you can't book somebody blindly. And I, although I've got lots of footage of me, um, I haven't spoken in a Star Wars movie. So I can't really show them that and say, look, here's what I can do. Um, and so what you should really do is get lots of, you know, student films or short films and make a show reel and show that. And then you get, you know, but I haven't got anything to show, and because of lockdown, I haven't been able to do anything to show. So I'm still working on that. There's still stuff I can do, and I've done some self tapes, and I've applied for lots of casting. So I feel like I'm on the cusp. So cool. keep the eyes peeled. Cool, good stuff. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're incredibly positive to be around. You know, it's uh, it's quite. Uh, you know, I was saying, I was saying to Lee, we've got to get Sam on. We've got to interview her. We've got to talk about this, and you know, it's. You're, you're certainly inspiring, uh, and I think to other people oh, as well. Thank you. I, we didn't get to catch up with you in Chicago, um, which was a real shame. And I know you were there, and I think we just kept missing each other. But, uh, you know, it would have been good was, to catch up with you. That was just the most insane weekend of my life. Yeah, it was good fun, that was. It was insane. Absolutely. Like, it changed my life. Would you would you don the storm costume again, Sam? Would you do it? Oh, such a good question. question. Do you know what I said um, on Rise of Skywalker? I said I wasn't going to do it again because, as much as I love it, it is background work and there's no credit, and I'm not getting any younger, and um, I'd like to have a child soon, and I don't think I can fit a baby in that costume. <laughs> um, but I just I kind of I want I want to act. That's what my passion, and I'm good at it, and that's what I want to do. Um, and so, I mean, if it's so hard because it's so hard to say no to. I know they're making um, the Ob One series here soon, and the Cassian Andor series, and I don't know if I could say no, especially in light of what's happened this year. I mean, we haven't had any work, so any work is a blessing. So, I mean, I'm not going to rule it out. We'll see. But it's so hard to say no to. Never say um, never. Yeah. Never say never. And also, the beauty of it is, because um, there's a bit of a stigma attached to background work by serious actors. You shouldn't really be an extra if you're an actor. Yeah. Um, and people don't put it in their CV and things. Obviously, Star Wars, the only real extra work I've ever done is in Star Wars. And I, that was a... That was a purposeful decision sorry but the words just got out a lot deliberate decision um on my part because i knew the direction i wanted to go in um but the beauty of it is even if i do get an agent and get a lead role in something i can still secretly go and be a stormtrooper and no one would know because i've got help well that's right daniel craig was a stormtrooper for god's sake exactly. so you know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly i really want to be the mandalorian though i met doug chang in um Sam, were you there in this shop, in the celebration shop? I can't remember. Anyway, I was in the celebration store in Chicago and Doug Chang was next to me in the queue because I was in a VIP queue. Um, yeah. And that's the first time I met Mark Daniel and, and I got introduced to Doug and by Matt Booker. Hi, Matt. And Matt told um, Doug that I was the first trooper and that I'd been in all five films. And Doug just went, well, then we have to get you in The Mandalorian. And I literally, like, nearly choked on nothing. Wow. Um, and he's like, where are you based? And I was like, in the UK. And he's like, because, mm, you know, they film in LA. So never say never, you know. I get. I said I'd fly myself out there if I could be in the Mandalorian. There you go. Um, I'd that. love to be in there. I would be so no, 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 very quickly, from probably not to definitely Mandalorian. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have to be a school tuber. I can have no, to be point. Fair point. Yeah. Let's not, let's not typecast you, eh? Although, I mean, 
I don't know. They'll be like sick of the sight of me. Like 15 carats, I'll tear her again. And I'm in all these books, you know. So it's like, yeah. Why not? Yeah. The droid builders feel like that about Lee, I think. Uh, you know, he's always got his credits up there. Oh, he's R2D2 now, is he? Oh, all right. There he goes yeah. again. Oh, God. There he goes again. That's because he's so good at his job. I like oh. to think that's why they keep asking me as well, you know. Exactly. Bless you, Sam. Exactly. Bless you. Hard workers. <laughs> Both of you are very hard workers. Not like me just getting his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, you know what it is? I always, I, 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 thank you for saying that I'm a positive person. I try to be, I try, and I just, I live, my mum raised me so well. She's, she's an amazing woman. And I just try to be kind, treat people as I like to be treated, be positive, work hard. I, and, you know, I moan because it's painful and whatever, but that people don't want to be around negative people. And if you turn up on time every day and work hard and are yeah. positive, you get, yeah. I think you can get quite far in life. And I yeah, think, that's a long way. If, I think if, if Lee was this, a joy builder who was just horrible, horrible, and just, you know, then he wouldn't have been us. I think your personality really does, especially on sort of film sets like Star Wars, where it is like a family, you'd stick out like a sore thumb and you, you wouldn't be asked back the next day. So yeah. I just think, and I think that just goes for life in general. Just be nice. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I've not been asked back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, That's yeah. one way of Sam finds it out anyway, Sammy. Thank you for that. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Listen, it ain't over till it's over. That's right. Yes, yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. When they've scraped the scraped the floor for somebody else, <laughs> and it's to get a phone call. Come in a minute. <laughs> no, fantastic. Hey Sam, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, you know, thank we are you guys. The, uh, raising money uh, for Calm. You know, the mental health charity. And, I know. Um, I've seen your total as it stands at time of recording, and I just can't wait for it to go just over that ten thousand pound mark. So. Yeah. Give as yeah. much as you can, guys, and and everyone in the joy, joy builder, UK joy builder, well done on everything you do. Keep being awesome. I can see everything that you guys get up to, and I love all your little chats. So just keep being awesome, and yeah, let's raise lots and lots of money. That's great. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Good luck and Merry with all Christmas. You I look forward to seeing you on the Star Wars set sometime soon. You, I bet you. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take care, Sam. Back Thanks, to the studio. Bye for now. Be with you. Thank you.